Here is today's featured headline in space. SpaceX says it has a simplified plan for getting humans to the moon on Starship while defending its current approach. Today is October 31st, 2025, and you're listening to Space News First Up. Here are today's other top headlines. Bulgarian small sat manufacturer Endurosat has raised $104 million. A recent interest rate cut could fuel further investment in the space industry. SpaceX is expected to win a $2 billion Pentagon satellite contract. Companies interested in participating in Golden Dome are struggling with a lack of information about the program. The Space Force is adopting a business model for satellite systems that would be owned by the government but operated by contractors. And Ukraine may join a European Union satellite communications program. First up is produced by Space News, the industry standard for professional space journalism. Visit spacenews.com for breaking news, policy updates, and original analysis. We begin today with news that SpaceX says it has a simplified plan for getting humans to the moon on Starship while defending its current approach. In a statement Thursday, the company said it responded to the latest calls for changes by offering a simplified mission architecture and concept of operations that would be faster and safer. SpaceX did not reveal any details of that alternative architecture. SpaceX has been the subject of criticism, including from NASA Acting Administrator Sean Duffy, about delays in Starship's development. Duffy has also suggested he would open up SpaceX's existing Artemis III landing contract. SpaceX, in the statement, said, Starship is the fastest path to getting humans back on the moon in a sustainable way, and noted it has achieved most of its 49 contract milestones to date on or ahead of schedule. Bulgarian small sat manufacturer Endurosat has raised $104 million. The company announced Thursday it raised the new round, bringing its total investment to more than $150 million. The extra funds will help ramp up production at a recently opened 17,500-square-meter facility in Sofia, Bulgaria. Endurosat leaders said the expansion will support growing demand for small to mid-sized satellite constellations, ranging from dozens to hundreds of spacecraft. Early-stage investors, Riot Ventures, Google Ventures, Lux Capital and Shrug Capital participated in the latest funding round, alongside the European Innovation Council Fund. A recent interest rate cut could fuel further investment in the space industry. During a panel at the Satellite Innovation Conference this week, investors said there is a fervor in the markets, unlike any seen recently, making it a great time for companies to raise money. That renewed interest could also mean a return to special purpose acquisition companies, or SPACs, blank check, public companies that merge with private firms. Many space companies went public through SPACs several years ago with mixed results. The Wall Street Journal reports that SpaceX is expected to win a $2 billion Pentagon satellite contract. The award would be for a constellation of air-moving target indicator satellites whose funding was included in the budget reconciliation bill passed in July. The satellites, designed to track missiles and aircraft in flight, could be incorporated into the Golden Dome missile defense system. The expected contract shows the greater role SpaceX is playing in military programs, one apparently not hurt by the falling out between Elon Musk and President Donald Trump earlier this year. Companies interested in participating in Golden Dome are struggling with a lack of information about the program. Executives at the Millsat Symposium said Thursday that they still have no information on the overall architecture for Golden Dome, and thus aren't sure how they fit into it. The information vacuum comes at a particularly challenging time, as the ongoing government shutdown has frozen funding allocations and disrupted program timelines, adding another layer of complexity to companies' investment decisions. Companies are also considering whether Golden Dome would continue beyond the Trump administration. The Space Force is adopting a business model for satellite systems that would be owned by the government but operated by contractors. The move towards so-called GOCO, or government-owned, commercially operated arrangements, has been shaped by developments such as Russia declaring that Western commercial satellites could be legitimate military targets if they support Ukraine. The GOCO model allows the government to leverage private sector technology 
and operational expertise while retaining ownership and control over critical infrastructure deemed essential for national security. For companies, the model offers crucial protection from the financial devastation that could result from having their assets targeted in a conflict. Ukraine may join a European Union satellite communications program. The European Commission proposed this week that Ukraine join GovSatcom, which provides secure satellite communication capabilities by pooling and sharing existing satellite resources from member states and accredited private operators. The new initiative aims to ensure that Ukraine can access fast, reliable, and secure satellite communications from member states' facilities to support its defense and resilience against Russia. Ukraine must first submit a formal request for EU support, which in turn will assess specific capacity needs in Ukraine and the wider Black Sea region. Discover your next mission in the space industry with the Space News Job Exchange. Visit jobs.spacenews.com to find top aerospace roles and connect with leading employers. And for employers, use discount code J-O-B-E-X for 15% off your next purchase. In other news, Blue Origin conducted a static fire test of its second new Glenn rocket Thursday night. The company ignited the seven BE-4 engines in the rocket's first stage just before 10 p.m. Eastern on the pad at Cape Canaveral. The test, lasting 38 seconds, also simulated aspects of the booster's landing burn to test interaction among propellant lines. The test is one of the final milestones before the rocket's launch, scheduled for as soon as November 9th. It will carry NASA's Escapade Mars mission. Space.com reports that China is scheduled to launch a new crew to its Tiangong space station today. A Long March 2F rocket is set to launch the Shenzhou-21 spacecraft at 11.44 a.m. Eastern from the Juquan spaceport. The spacecraft will carry astronauts Zhang Lu, Wu Fei, and Zhang Hongzheng to Tiangong for a six-month stay. Zhang Lu, the commander, will be making his second flight while Wu Fei and Zhang Hongzheng will be on their first. Share your company's news with the entire space industry through Stellar Dispatch, the press release service from Space News. Learn more and use discount code SD2106 for 15% off when you submit yours at spacenews.com slash Stellar Dispatch. Russian Space Web reports that Russia has replaced the Soyuz spacecraft for the next mission to the International Space Station. A Soyuz spacecraft with the serial number 759 was built for the Soyuz MS-28 mission, launching in late November. However, the spacecraft reportedly suffered damage to its thermal protection system during testing, and Roscosmos elected to replace it with another Soyuz, number 753, that was built for tourist missions and is in storage. A Chinese startup raised funding to develop space domain awareness and other services. StarDetect raised about $14 million in Series A, 1 and A2 rounds in late September. The company claims to have over 20 payloads in stable operation in orbit, with its products serving multiple commercial satellite constellations. The company says it will work with industry partners to verify new space-based intelligent application scenarios, including satellite communication optimization, onboard mission planning, space domain awareness, and space computing. Reuters reports that shares in GlobalStar surged on reports that SpaceX is interested in buying the company. The satellite operator is exploring a potential sale, which reportedly attracted attention from SpaceX. Shares in the company closed up more than 22% Thursday on the reports. GlobalStar currently operates satellites whose capacity is primarily used by Apple to provide emergency connectivity services for iPhones. Global Star is working on a new generation of satellites using funding provided by Apple. A startup will fly a hosted payload on a momentous spacecraft next year. DeFi Space's Clustergate 2 payload will be on the Vigoride 7 mission launching early next year, the company's announced Thursday. The payload is designed to support computing applications linked to sensors on Vigoride, 